But we have the White House in just a moment here. President Biden calling the family of American journalist Evan Gershkovich yesterday, a day after the State Department labeled him as wrongfully detained by Russia. Joining us now from the White House is Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs, Roger Carstens. Mr. Carstens, thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, what can you tell us at this hour about the health and well-being of Evan Gershkovich? Willie, thanks for having me on today. Uh, well, we haven't yet had consular access, but we are getting reports that he's in good health, that he's in good spirits. Uh, obviously, we want to make sure that someone from the U.S. Department of State has a chance to visit and just a typical consular visit that we conduct all the time. We want to make sure we get that so we can see with our own eyes to get a sense of how he's doing and how he's holding up. Do you know where he is? Is he in a prison? Do you have a sense for that? He's in La Fortiva prison right now. It's the same place that uh, Brittany Griner spent time, Trevor Reed, Paul Whelan, and he's in the same location right now. So you obviously did some incredible and important work to free Brittany Griner. Uh, what does this process look like to you? How is it different and in what ways might it be the same in terms of getting Evan home? Well, the most important thing is uh, we know Evan is not a spy. He never was a spy. He's never worked for the U.S. government. He's a journalist who works for The Wall Street Journal. And as the president and secretary said, journalism's not a crime. So we know that he's innocent. Uh, just like the other folks that you mentioned. Uh, after that, things start to get a little different. Uh, every case is different, but what I can tell you is that in the last 26 months in this administration, we've brought home 26 Americans working closely with the White House and the National Security Council to find ways to bring folks home. And these, obviously, negotiations, uh, you can speak to this better than, than anyone, are not necessarily rational. You can't say to Vladimir Putin, of course, he's not a spy. He's a reporter for The Wall Street Journal. Let him go. Vladimir Putin snatched Brittany Griner on the eve of the war with Ukraine as a bargaining chip, probably doing it again here with Evan Gershkovich. So how do you begin? How do you engage with a Russian government who is going to want something in return, quite obviously? Now, sadly, I can't get into the specifics of negotiations and how we plan to proceed. But, Willie, I can tell you that even when we don't necessarily have a great relationship with a country, we're able to find ways to bring Americans home. A good example is just last year in the Biden administration, we brought home nine Americans from Venezuela. We've already brought Americans home from Russia. So we will find a way to do it. There are ways to do, do this and progress. And you have a good team. Again, the State Department's working hand in glove with the National Security Council. We're partnering with pretty much a broad group of people to include members on Capitol Hill, NGOs, and of course the family, the Gershkovich family, uh, whom I will be visiting in the coming days. So Mr. Carstens, uh, yesterday the uh, United States government declared uh, the reporter wrongfully detained. Uh, what tools does that give you in this situation that you did not have prior to him being labeled wrongfully detained? Well, the most important thing I can tell you is that it now uh, obligates us by law to pursue his release. Prior to that wrongful detention determination, uh, we will check on citizens, of course. Uh, their safety and security is our highest priority. But once that determination is made, we are now legally obligated to seek his release. So we're able now to cobble together all elements of the United States national government, the, the national power that this nation can bring to bear. And working closely with the National Security Council, we'll find a way and a path to bring both Paul Whelan and Evan home. And do you expect to get an audience uh, with Evan Gershkovich? Will you, we be able to get American eyes on him? We don't want to just take it their word from the Russians that he's doing OK and that he's healthy. You know, it's hard to say that uh, we have that expectation. We should. I mean, by law and by international law and convention, we must receive uh, uh, permission to conduct a consular visit. We're hoping the Russians allow us to do so. Uh, will that happen? It remains to be seen. But that is that is an obligation by convention and international law. And before I let you go, what is the status of the negotiation for Paul Whelan, uh, who is still front and center, top of mind to a lot of people in this country? He's uh, front and center in my mind. Uh, I can't get into the specifics, like uh, just as uh, was uh, told by the administration recently, we have a significant offer on the table. We urge the Russians to take it. I can tell you that I talked to Paul Whelan on Monday. He called mm. me from prison in Russia. We had a chance to catch up and we talked about Evan's case, frankly. Uh, but we talked to his family all the time. It's constant uh, communication. And clearly, I want to echo what you just said. Paul Whelan is still front and center in this administration's mind. And we're going to find a way to get Paul Whelan and Evan home. A significant offer on the table. Let's hope they both and others come home as quickly as possible. U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs, Roger Carstens. Thanks for your time this morning. We appreciate it.